In this video, we will show you when to drop zeros. Dropping zeros means typing 19 in the calculator rather than typing 19,000, for example. This is an important habit to form if you want to save time without compromising your score. Our objectives in the next five minutes or so are to help you understand when to drop zeros and show you examples of this smart shortcut. We drop zeros when all the numbers in a certain list have one or more zeros at the end. For example, if you're finding the average of 2,400, 5,600 and 7,900, we could drop the zeros and find the average of 24, 56 and 79 instead. 24 plus 56 plus 79 is a lot easier to type on that little on-screen calculator that they give you during the tests, and when you do, it equals 159. 159 divided by 3 equals 53, so the average is 5,300 after you bring back the zeros. Often, you don't even need to bring back the zeros, as only one of the options in the answer choices will begin with a 5 and a 3. Another example of when you would drop zeros would be if you're dealing with a single figure with several zeros at the end. Imagine you'd reduce 58,000 by 12%. If you're not sure of the method, this is covered in our previous video about increasing by a percentage. We should multiply the figure by 0.88, but instead of typing 58,000 multiplied by 0.88, we could just type 58 multiplied by 0.88, giving us an answer of 51.04. Lastly, see which option in the answer begins with those numbers, and that's the one to go for. Yes, this only saves us 4 or 5 seconds, but as we've already discussed, every second is worth it. So we've discussed when we should drop the zeros in a quantitative reasoning question. Let's think about when we shouldn't drop the zeros. My recommendation is to avoid dropping zeros when all the answer choices begin with the same numbers. For example, if the five answer choices are 66,700, 6,670, 667, 66.7, and 6.67, then dropping zeros won't help much and could easily cause confusion. In this instance, it'd be better to work with the unshortened figures. Okay, so let's put these concepts into practice with some questions. Try the first one, actively thinking about what you should do with the zeros. Question 1. In 2018, the average income of an executive in state P was $265,000. If this figure dropped by 20% over the course of the next two years, what is the average income for an executive in state P in 2020? Instead of multiplying 265,000 by 0.8, we multiply 265 by 0.8. The answer must therefore be $212,000. Choice B. Dropping zeros is particularly handy during the UK CAT exam when dealing with a large table of data. So try the next question that presents data in a table. What is the average income of the six people in the table, shown on screen? Did you see how dropping zeros can save a huge amount of time and stress? To calculate the average income, we must first add up the figures in the income column. But adding 32,200 to 34,500, etc. would take forever. Rather than typing all 30 digits in that column, we can simply add 32, 34.5, 22, 53, 29.5 and 70. That's only 14 digits to type, a massive time saving. Those six numbers add to 241. To find the average, we divide by six, which gives us 40.16667.
making the first answer choice of £40,166.67 pence correct. There's another advantage to dropping zeros that you may not have noticed. It is far easier to misclick on pressing the calculators button 30 times than it is just 14 times. That's why dropping zeros can also reduce the chance of making silly errors, as well as avoiding a lot of potential stress. We hope that we've provided you a tool to save precious seconds on the UK Cat, and that you feel aware of when you should use it. Once you've started dropping zeros, it gets pretty addictive, so I don't blame you for having to get to practicing example questions straight after this video. Good luck. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.